Okay, good. Well, we are uh, just about to be <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to everyone uh, who's uh, joining us uh, both on Zoom and, uh, and Facebook and those who will be uh, joining us uh, later on YouTube as well. It's a blessing to uh, worship with all of you today. Um, we're thankful for that. Uh, I do want to announce that uh, uh, that I have set up a, another virtual choir for uh, uh, for next Sunday, so I've sent out information on that. But if you'd like to be a part of it and you have not got that information, um, please uh, uh, let us know. Uh, give a call, uh, send an email uh, to the church, uh, stpaulroberts.il at gmail.com, and. Uh, and I'll get the information out to you so you can participate in our virtual choir as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to that. It's always a, a blessing to share that music together. Uh, also, for uh, those who may be watching on Facebook Live, uh, uh, Pastor Priscilla is, uh, is keeping an eye on uh, comments, so if uh, um, I know last week we had some uh, some comments during the children's sermon. So uh, if there's anything uh, uh, anybody needs to let us know, we'll try to keep an eye on that, especially at that time. So, uh, uh, yeah, she's going to try. She has other other duties going on here. Okay. I will uh, take a look at that. And see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, she'll give that a try. We will see how that goes. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and start? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent us the good shepherd to lead us to your waters. At the cross, you water us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The uh, first hymn we'll have this morning uh, is one where uh, I think we have sung this before. Um, the tune was new, and so I'm going to use uh, the tune of Morning Has Broken. Faith the first 
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. He gives us new life and hope through his resurrection. Hallelujah. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. God has called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, let's see, make sure uh, Gary is unmuted. Will we? Okay. There we go. Thank you, Gary. The first reading is Acts 2, 14, and 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted him, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed this message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 per, 3, persons were added. <clears throat> uh, now we'll have uh, special music that uh, uh, Mike and Kathy have recorded for us. <laughs>
Thank you, Mike and Kathy. And uh, now uh, we'll continue uh, with the reading of the psalm. Gary, take away. Could we please read responsively Psalm 116, 1 through 4, and 12 through 19? I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, Lord, is the death of your servant. Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of our handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. All God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The second reading for today is 1 Peter 1, 17 through 23. If you invoke as if you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds. Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver and gold, but with precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through you him through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart, you have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Hey, they're coming. Everybody, the kids are coming. Shh, shh. All right, all right, get down. Get down. You ready? Okay. When they come in, <laughs> shout surprise. Oh, the dogs can give it away. One, one, two, three. Surprise! So, hello to uh, to all the kids out there, um, and uh, if if you want to, uh, if you're watching on Zoom and, and you want to take off your your mute or your video and and say hello, um, you can uh, you can do that. Otherwise, uh, um, and Pastor Priscilla is uh, is watching on the Facebook feed as well. So, hello. Hello. Hi. So, Hi. how are you doing this morning? Good. 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 No, I'm good. Good to see you. So, um, so did you did you hear me? Did you get what I was doing there? Yes. I was I was acting like what was going to happen. Like, um, what do you think I was acting like? I think you were acting like you were surprising us. Like, yeah, like I was surprising you. And, and you may or may not have heard of something that people do sometimes called a surprise party. You ever heard of a surprise party? Come on, Yes, I've heard of a surprise party. Yeah, so in a surprise party, uh, 
then yeah, people mm -hmm. will, will gather someplace for a party and the person who's being surprised um, is supposed to not know that these people are gathered there for a party. And maybe it's for a birthday and people have done something, um, but they don't know how much uh, has no. been done for it. Um, Turn around and sit down. So I, uh, I remember a surprise party um, okay. that, uh, that my dad put together for his parents for their 50th wedding anniversary. and and um, took them out to uh, um, a lake uh, with a hotel by it that was a few hours away. And, and so it seemed like it was going to be a, a family party, but there were people gathered together um, from, uh, from all the many years and even the pastor who had married them 50 years before, um, lots of people. So it was a, a really neat surprise um, in, in that way. So, so a surprise party, you know, maybe there's the idea that there's, there's something, but a person doesn't know just uh, just how much, how good of a, a surprise it is. So uh, uh, a surprise party can can feel like not so uh, uh, so happy at first, and then very happy. So in the in the story that uh, we're about to hear um, from uh, the Gospel of Luke, uh, it's the day of Easter, right? So Easter is the day that what happened? Can I tell me what happened on Easter morning? Um, we got to, we went to eat breakfast, and then we woke <laughs> up and ate breakfast. We went outside, and not what we did on Easter. on Easter. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear. The very first Easter I was talking about. Um, that's it's it's good. You do remember what happened? So the very first Easter. The reason we have Easter is because Jesus had been dead and buried, and then what? Then he came alive again. Then he came alive again, that's right. He came alive again from the tomb. So this is, this story that we're going to hear, it's that same day. It's just like the, that was in the morning, and this is um, coming towards nighttime. And so there are um, a couple of uh, friends and followers of Jesus who are walking along, and, uh, and, they had had all these things happen where Jesus had been killed and buried. This was their friend and the one that, that they looked to, um, to to save their people. And he had died and been buried, and, and they were sad over that. And then they had heard the news that, uh, that he had, that the tomb was empty and, and that he had risen again, but they hadn't seen him. And they were confused, and they're walking along the road. And somebody comes and walks beside them, and it's like a stranger. Um, and uh, they, they don't recognize this person. The person says, what are you talking about? And they said, what do you mean, what are we talking about? What else could we be talking about? We're talking about the things about Jesus and all the things that he did, but then he died and, and uh, he was crucified. And then on top of that, some people, uh, some of the women went to the tomb and they said he wasn't there. And they said the angel said that he had risen. <clears throat> and, uh, and so then the stranger started to talk to them and he said, um, don't you know that all these things had to happen? And he started explaining all these things through scripture about the Messiah. And they were still confused what they were learning from the stranger. And then they got to the place where they were going and they were walking um, uh, several miles to another town. And they got there and they said, hey, stay with us, have, have a meal with us. Um, and, uh, and so the stranger does stay with them. And the stranger says the prayer for the meal and, and breaks the bread so that people can share and each have some. And then all of a sudden they realize that this is Jesus who's been walking with them all the time. Jesus, their friend who had been crucified and who had risen from the grave, had been walking with them even when they thought they were alone. And that's the thing that I really want you to hear, right? Even when they thought they were alone, even when they thought Jesus was gone that Jesus had been with them all this time, walking with them and, and sharing this good news with them. Um, and then it was like a surprise party, a surprise when they realized that, that Jesus, who had been dead, is, is risen and is right there with them. Uh, so this great surprise that Jesus gives them, that, uh, that he was with them all the time, even when they didn't realize it, right? So... Um, God's presence for us, God's love for us, doesn't depend on even whether we realize it or not. 
God is always there for us. So we can trust in that, uh, that great surprise that Christ is risen from the dead and that uh, God is always with us. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the great surprise that is the resurrection of Jesus, our Lord, that he's risen from the dead and that he gives us life and that you, God, are always with us. Uh, we thank you for this good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Thank you all. Over here. <clears throat> this uh, will be our uh, gospel acclamation or song we'll sing before the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to his name. The Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us, they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself and the scriptures. As they came near the village where they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up 
and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. It's the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, uh, I felt uh, like using a, uh, a song that, uh, that I actually wrote this time, and it's maybe uh, 20 years ago or so that I wrote this. I uh, think I've even done a sermon before, but this is a new sermon, I promise you. never seem so alone this rose never seem so alone walked along and hung our heads can't believe he's really dead this rose never seems so all alone now nothing was the way that they expected it to be just a week earlier They've been shouting, Hosanna, save us, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. How had things gotten so bad so quickly? Nothing was the way they expected it to be. They were so overwhelmed by what had happened that they were amazed that the stranger even asked them what they were talking about. What else would anyone be talking about? Nothing was the way they expected it to be. In fact, everything was so different from what they expected that these two friends and followers of Jesus didn't even recognize their friend when he showed up on the road walking with them. But they told the stranger about how nothing was the way they expected it to be. They told about Jesus, a prophet, who spoke powerfully of the ways of God and who acted with the power of God. But he had been handed over, and crucified, and buried. And nothing was the way they expected it to be. They said, we had hoped that he would be the one to set Israel free. Nothing was the way they expected it to be. Nothing was the way they had hoped it would be. And understand this, by this time, they had even heard the preaching of Easter. The women who were the first preachers of the resurrection had told Jesus' disciples about the empty tomb and the message from the angels that Jesus was alive. But these disciples were still looking sad. Maybe they had also had hoped that if Jesus had risen, that they wouldn't have gone all day from the time of that good news to now without seeing him themselves. Nothing was the way they expected it to be. Nothing was as they hoped it would be. Stranger, do you mean you haven't heard? Stranger, do you mean you haven't heard? Three days ago they killed him dead. We hoped that we'd be saved instead. Stranger, do you mean you haven't heard? Yeah. 
you ever have those times where nothing is as you expected it to be? Those times where nothing is going as you had hoped. Now, sometimes changes in day-to-day -day plans might bother you or might not bother you, but everyone gets disappointed when things don't turn out the way that we had hoped. And isn't that all of our lives right now? Nothing is the way we expected it to be. Nothing is the way we had hoped it would be. A few months ago, even weeks ago, there are planned moments, kids' sports, concerts, graduations, that won't happen as planned. Of course, we would like to be together to greet one another without taking the risk of putting loved ones in danger. This is not how we expected it to be. This is not how we had hoped to spend our spring. And that's not to mention that there are much worse problems than that. People losing income, people losing jobs, and even, of course, the worst of all, people losing their lives. Healthcare workers who must help, who give themselves and put themselves in a place to help. This isn't how any of us expected things to be. It's not how any of us hoped it would be. And that's our reality right now. But there are always things that aren't the way we expected them to be. And there are always things that aren't how we hoped they would be. In the hard times, do you sometimes feel the weight of the moment, the pain and loss, and lose track of the thought that God is with you, even just for a while? Even as a pastor, I have those moments where I get wrapped up in my own thoughts and thinking nothing is the way I expected it to be. I have those times where I get bogged down in thinking about what I had hoped those moments where I lose sight of the presence of God. But even in that, even in those moments, God doesn't lose sight of us. And God does not abandon us. The stranger said, why can't you understand? The stranger said, why can't you understand? Don't you know that suffering is necessary for this king? Stranger said, why can't you understand? And so even though they didn't recognize him yet, Jesus explained to his friends that the Messiah had to suffer and die. They were caught up in the hope of glory that things would be all better all at once. They had hoped that nothing would be bad ever again once they started following Jesus. They expected Jesus to make them permanent members of the winning team. Now in a way, he would do that, but not by avoiding hard times and suffering. Nothing was the way they expected it to be. Jesus had to suffer because people suffer. Sometimes it's as a result of things we do. Sometimes it's a result of things that other people do. Sometimes other people suffer because of choices that we make. Sometimes it's just by chance. As the Messiah, as the chosen one, Jesus joined that suffering because he needed to start there to show that God is with us, even when things are at their worst. Now Jesus' friends still didn't recognize him, but they were moved by what the stranger had to say. And they asked him to stay and eat with them when they got where they were going. And when Jesus gave the blessing at the table and broke the bread, 
their minds were opened and they realized that Jesus had been with them the whole time. Nothing was the way they expected it to be. God was with them. We begged him stay and share a meal with us. We begged him stay and share a meal with us. But when he blessed and broke the bread, before his name could once be said, he disappeared, but we knew it was Jesus. Nothing is the way that we expected it to be. Death does not have the last word. Nothing is the way we expected it to be. God is with us in all times and all circumstances, no matter what we have done or what someone else might do. Nothing is the way we expected it to be. God has suffered and died, and no one can be separated from the love of God. Nothing is the way we expected it to be. Christ is risen from the dead, and fear and death and sin do not have power to control us anymore. Nothing is the way we expect it to be, even when we don't see God with us on our journey. God sees us and is there with us. Nothing is the way we expected it to be. Thanks be to God, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He rose from the grave, oh, he rose. He rose from the grave, oh, yes, he rose. He came to us in our despair, nourishment and love to share. He rose from the grave, oh, he rose. Christ is risen. Nothing is as we expected it to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. 
God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we give thanks for God's many blessings and for all the ways those blessings are shared. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we pray. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church, for the people who have been given your good news, that even though we may not always see you, that you are always present with us, that you are risen and you give us the ability to have trust and hope in you, the life that you give. May we share that good news with all who need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your entire creation, for all of the plants and animals and the ecosystems, for the way that you make things grow, we give thanks for the ways that we harm your creation. We pray for your help and guidance. Um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders in every place, every level, every type. They may make good decisions, especially in this time for what is good for people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are struggling with oppression, with homelessness, with war, with hunger. For those who don't have safe places to live for those suffering from abuse or neglect. For all those whose struggles have been made worse by this current crisis, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are uh, sick and struggling with this virus. Pray for all those who give them medical care and attention. Pray for all those who <clears throat> are serving the public and 
at higher risk themselves. We pray for those who have lost income or having financial difficulties for all these needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose needs we know who are in need of healing. We pray for Martin, Irene, Dixie, Lee, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Tim, Pat, Pauline, Marcia, Braden, Susan, Irma, Doug, John, Keith, Pam, Heidi, Judy, Mandy, Murray, Pat, Marge, Butch, David, Dennis, Lisa, and all for whom we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for all of those who have gone before, who have walked the path in faith, those for whom you have been present, even whether they have always seen you or not, and who you have claimed with your gift of eternal life. And we pray and trust in that same gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. And why don't we sing the Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen. Here's the last hymn.
Rejoice, people of God. Christ is risen from the dead. Go in peace to love and serve God. Christ is with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. This concludes our worship, and thank you all for worshiping with us.